Good morning, folks. I don't want to take lots of time just to say welcome to Wilderness Christian Fellowship, and we hope you enjoy this internet service we've prepared for you today. First up is the message, which is delivered via a proper video recording today. But before we speak more about that, we've also included a few songs after the message with lyrics that will come up on the screen, similar to last week's message. At that point, you might want to turn the volume up, lift yourself out of your cozy seat, fill your lungs, and engage in a proper praise party wherever you happen to find yourself. The family is extremely welcome to join in, and I'm sure the neighbours won't mind in the slightest. Plus, it will do our spirits a whole lot of heavenly good. Now, about that message, our very own Anthony Noble has prepared something for us today. Most of you will know that Anthony often uses art as a medium for his messages, and today is no exception. He's ready with his easel, brush, and palette knives to bring us a word from the Lord, so let's quiet our thoughts from whatever's been going on around us, today and over this past week, from the media whose attention in the most part is far from the Lord, and let's prepare our hearts to enter into the Lord's presence. Father, thank you for your promise that you would never leave nor forsake us. When we feel far from you, we know that you're never even a moment away, but you know our inmost thoughts and care deeply for each and every person who's watching this video. Thank you that you are watching over your people in the midst of the turmoil that's engulfed our world. Not only that, you inhabit your people and enable us to shine your truth, your love, and your abundant life on this lost and dying world. We are your children, and we love you, Lord. Help us to bring glory to you by loving those who need you every day in all we do. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we want to bless and strengthen those who are working to protect the population of the world from falling prey to sickness and disease. We ask that you speak your wisdom, knowledge and understanding into the minds of those who are responsible for coordinating those efforts. And most importantly, that you would open the eyes of the spiritually blind and the ears of the spiritually deaf, so that they would recognize and call on your name, the only name by which man can be saved, Jesus. And as we stand against that which the enemy means for harm, we know that you have a redemptive plan in all this, so we thank you for what you are doing. We trust in you alone. And now we thank you for the message that you've given Anthony to share with us. Speak into our hearts today, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wilderness Christian Fellowship Sunday morning. Uh, my name is Anthony Noble and I'll be sharing God's Word with you today. I am an artist and so I'm going to use my canvas to illustrate what I believe God has given me to share with you. Now if we look at this canvas it is black. It's been prepared black. It was black before I started. It's primed black and when we look at this canvas we could identify with it as to where we are at the moment. This is the lockdown. This is your circumstances. This could be the finances. This could be your situation right now. Everything is black. And for, for the sake of this morning, let's call this COVID-19. And COVID-19 has brought death. It has brought lockdown. It has brought pain. It has brought changes. It has brought the fact that we're not even meeting together. But thank God we still have his word. God's word cannot be bound regardless of how dark our situation may be. God's word remains God's word. It's purified seven times over and it is God's word. Now I'm going to share a reading with you and we're going to speak to COVID-19. We're going to say to COVID-19, Job chapter 9. Okay, and I want to read Job chapter 9 very briefly. <clears throat> Let's make that Job 10. Sorry, Job 10. It says Job 10, and this is Job speaking. And remember, Job had a difficult time. Job had a black time. He says, I loathe my very life. 
Therefore, I will give free rein to my complaint and speak out in the bitterness of my soul. And this is Job speaking to his friends, but also speaking to God and saying, I'm going to complain to God. Now, I know many people say, don't complain to God. I'm saying if you his son, you his daughter, you have the right to go to God and say, God, I don't know what to do. Job did that. And he says in the second verse, he says, I will say to God, do not condemn me, but tell me what charges you have against me. And this is Job opening his heart to God, really opening himself and saying, Lord, I'm in a black place. I'm in a dark place. What charges have you got against me? And it's the, the third verse says, do not do it, please. Sorry, does it please you to oppress me or spurn the work of your hand while you smile on the schemes of the wicked? Do you have eyes of flesh? Do you see as mortal sees? And obviously God does not see as mortal sees. God does not see the dark because in Psalms 139, now I'm writing these down so that you can remember them. Psalms 139, the Bible says, even the darkest dark is not dark to him. So in your darkest, darkest, darkest state, God says, the darkness is not dark to me. And what I want to say to your situation, Psalms 23 says, Yea, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, once again it's dark, I will fear no evil, for God is with me. Now, I want to encourage you this morning and say, you know, even how difficult, even how dark your circumstance, doesn't take God by surprise, first of all. Secondly, God can use that difficult situation, Romans 8, 28, to turn things around. There's nothing, and I mean nothing, too hard for God. So let me speak to my canvas and say, canvas, your COVID-19 is not going to kill you. It's going to strengthen you. It's going to draw me closer to you, to me. I want to say to my canvas, canvas, you and I have a relate, are going to have this close relationship. I am going to initiate the relationship. I want to tell you, I made you. Psalms 139, I put you together in your mother's womb. Psalms 139, I have a plan for you. Now, right now, that canvas is dark. It's black. And I'm going to use, I'm not going to use my stopwatch today. I'm going to use oil paints to create and to change this canvas. I'm going to use my brush, of course, it's just a normal brush. And remember something, the brush on its own cannot paint. Look, it's dead. But in my hand, it's an agent of change. And I want to say to you this morning, Anthony Noble is just a brush, just a brush, okay? Now I'm going to use oil paints and I'm going to change this canvas and please take note what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with a little bit of raw linseed oil. And into the raw linseed oil, I'm going to apply, guess what? Black paint, purple paint, and some blue paint. Now, all these are dark colors. And you may be saying to me, but Anthony, don't you care? Don't you see that my situation is already dark? Why then paint me black? Why then do you make things even more difficult than they already are? Take note, this is black paint on a black canvas. If anybody could talk in a situation like this, the first question one would ask is, where is God? Guess what? He's right here. He's with you. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. Okay? And if you think about it, it's shiny black now. But because of the black paint that I've applied there, I am now going to apply color. You see, the color I have, I'm going to apply will be most effective because of the black. Sometimes, Sometimes in our situations, in our lives, 
God allows those black situations and he allows those dark situations. Why? To show you how great he is. Now those marks I've just put over there, you don't understand what I've done. Oftentimes we don't understand what God is doing. I'll give it some red there and I'll give it some purple. Although you won't see the purple, I know it's there, right? Now, if I told you that these are clouds and through those clouds, the light comes through. Obviously, you don't see that. Remember, God knows the big picture. Okay, watch carefully. It is into that black paint and into those dark clouds, sorry, that black paint and using that paint there, that white or yellow paint there, that I'm going to bring about clouds. There and we have some red running through there. And there we go. Now I want to put some highlights onto those clouds. Over there. And over there. Notice I don't have nobody's advice. I've never heard God asking anybody for advice. God doesn't need our help to do anything. Okay, there we go. And a few clouds there and the light rolling through there. Here yeah, the light goes through there. Now, before I started painting, I knew that. Before I started working, I knew that. And oftentimes we think, rather, I think God doesn't know what is happening in my life. God is unaware of it. Guess what? He's always, always aware of it. He's always aware of everything. If I did that, did that, I did that, and I did that. Can anybody explain what I've just done? Obviously not. You don't know what I'm doing. Never do we ever fully understand the mind of God. Remember, His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. For as high as the heavens are above the, uh, the earth, so are higher His thoughts. And as far as the east is from the west, so far He removes our sins from us. We cannot understand God. Now, if I said to you, these are beautiful trees, you would obviously think trees, they, those are just marks. But if I speak, remember Proverbs 18 to 18 to 21, life and death are the power of the tongue. Watch what you say. Watch what you say because your words come from your thoughts. Your thoughts generate your words. So I said these are trees and I will show you why I said they are trees. And they are trees. There we go. Take note, I haven't discussed this with anybody. I haven't asked anybody for permission. Okay. Let's have some more color to these trees here. Let's add some more color to them. Whenever the light strikes the trees, the leaves, it's bright. And on this end, wherever the light falls on the leaves, it's bright. <coughs> By the way, have you noticed the road here? There's a beautiful road here. Obviously, you don't see it. Even though I've told you there's a road there, you may not see it. Remember, God knows the road you take. He is with you on whichever road He has ordained for you to use. He's with you. He never leaves you. 
he sticks closer than a brother okay put some branches and some twigs into these trees the stems there they go there they go okay my trees i said they trees trees speak of fruit trees speak of life remember god is not a forester He's a farmer. He plants trees. Jesus walked past a fig tree. Look for figs. Will he find fruit on me? Here we go. Where are my trees? As I had promised. And just touch those stems there. Wherever the light falls on those leaves, it's bright. These are grasses over here. And as I said, there's a road here. Now, the road speaks of a journey. Every single person is on a journey. The journey, you don't know where it's going. You don't know where it's coming from. You know that there's a journey. Okay, you're on a journey. You're on a road. And if... Christ is your traveling companion. You have nothing to fear. Okay, there's my dust road going there. Here we go. And right here in front, the foreground of my road is darkest. Where you stand, it's darkest. And we add some shadows onto the edges of the road there. And we put some tracks here so that you know you're not the first traveler on this road, nor will you be the last. You leave a legacy. You're leaving tracks. Wherever I walk, wherever I go, I leave tracks. On the edges of the road there, and on this side, is green grass. Oh, by the way, I hope you've noticed we're still using the same brush. I haven't heard the brush complaining. I haven't heard the brush arguing. I haven't heard the brush telling me what to do. Right? How often do I want to prescribe to God and tell God what to do and how to do what to do? Now, I bet this canvas did not know it would look like that. This canvas did not know when it was like this. It did not know that by spending time with me, it would change. You see, when I spend time with God, I change. He does not. Okay? I change. I become what he wants me to be. This painting will now carry my name, which means I take ownership of it. It's the only time I'll use a different brush is now. And here I will sign my name. Now, the interesting thing about my signature, my name, is that it tells people whose this painting is. Not who the painting is, but whose the painting is. When people look at me, do they see whose I am? Or do they see who I am? There's a big difference. Whose I am will determine my value. Who I am is my reputation. Okay, and oftentimes we depend on our reputation, we depend on our personalities, we temp depend on who we think we are. Who I am is not important, not as important as whose I am. Now, this canvas carries my name. 
and the year that it was done, 2020. Okay. Now, what I want to encourage you with, when you look at this canvas, yes, there's darkness. I want to say, walk away from the darkness, come into the light. If you look carefully, there's light here, which means the light falls there. Walk away from the darkness. Don't walk into the painting, walk out of it. Walk away from the darkness. Turn your back on the darkness and see the light that God has for you. Remember, Jesus is the light. And if he is the light of the world, walk towards him. If your life is feeling like that, I want to encourage you. This canvas will be changed when it has a relationship with me, when it spends time with me, like this one has spent time with me. It'll never be the same again. This one. If these two could have a conversation, the top one would probably say to the bottom one, how did you get there? And the bottom one will say to the top one, I spend time with Anthony. Can I say I spend time with God? Can people see the difference in my darkness, spending time with him? I walk away from the dark and into his glorious light. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, this morning we want to thank you for your presence. We want to thank you that you are God. We want to thank you that you know every fiber of every single person. Indeed, Lord, you count the hairs on the heads of every single person who is in the sound of my voice. I pray, Lord, now that you bless, that you open up doors, that you open up our eyes to see that you are our God, and there is no other God besides you. I pray, Lord Jesus, for those of us who are struggling with the lockdown, who are struggling with dark times, who are struggling with darkness in our lives, around us, I pray, Father God, that the light that is from you, for you, Lord Jesus said, you are the light, not you were the light, you are the light, present tense, Lord Jesus, you are the light, be the light in every life, and I pray, Father God, that we will surrender our lives to you, and have that one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with you, Lord, we turn our backs on the dark, and we face the light, Lord, we know that, whether we're going through the valley of the shadow of death, we do not need to fear, for your rod and your staff, they comfort us. Father, thank you that we can talk to you. Thank you that we can complain to you. Thank you that you, we, you, you call us your children. And as your children, Lord, we come and we say thank you for listening to us. We pray, we pray your blessing upon every single person now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. In my wrestling and in my doubts in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea yeah in the silence you won't let go in the questions your truth will Troubled sea, whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. Yeah. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore.
Father, we come to you in every season. We trust you with our lives. You're the peace in our troubled sea. You're the fire before us, constant in the darkness, and you will lead us through the storms. Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storms. Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storms. Every voice. Fire before us, you're the
Say that you're mine.